Rob Alden here, IMX Productions and 10 Minute Photoshop. Today we're looking at blending options. So let's go through the list. Okay, so I just did put a quick um, text here, blending options, and I'm going to come here to my layers palette and right click up to blending options. So this is a really powerful tool. You can do a lot of stuff with blending options. A great way to stylize text or logos or, well, pretty much anything. Okay, so let's go through the list. First, we've got uh, Bevel and Emboss. Okay, this works great. First, actually, I'm going to go first to color overlay just because the other options will work better here. So let's just pick a, uh, let's go for a blue. Okay, so uh, color overlay, pretty simple, adds a color. You know, you've got blend modes in here that if you had kind of a background texture or anything, you could always have fun with that. Let's go back up to Bevel and Emboss and see how this just makes it 3D. Really cool. So you can play with the size of the embossing and the soften, and then you've got down here your highlights white and your shadows black. You can play with those don't I, I say you know for modern looks don't go too this looks kind of old-fashioned stick to a nice subtle um, bevel and emboss really cool okay a stroke <laughs> um, this just adds in stroke around the the um, object so as you can see it adds a nice touch there black I like that inner shadow simple I don't use this too often it's not something you're gonna use too too often but it kind of gives it some uh, some kind of a depth so you can play around with those settings. Inner glow, same idea, adds a glow on the inside. Um, keep it to screen or keep it to, or add if you want to add a glow there. Of course, you've got your opacities here. You can play with that. I'm going to turn that one off. Satin, another one I don't use too much. You know, satin just adds kind of a, a shade to the color. Not the greatest effect. We looked at color overlay, gradient overlay. So let's turn off the color overlay and let's just add a gradient. So same idea. This is great if you're going to be creating, um, if you're going to be creating kind of a, you know, metallic look. I like to just create a nice subtle uh, gray to white gradient in there. That along with the bevel and emboss and the stroke makes a nice kind of metallic look. So, okay, we dropped this under gray. It looks a little cooler. Uh, pattern overlay, you could add a pattern to it. I don't use this too often. I use um, just um, masking methods to add patterns. Outer glow, I'll get to that one in a minute, and then um, we're just going to skip to drop shadow here. And drop shadow, obviously, drop shadow. Now for drop shadow, you can play with the distance, size, so if you want it more blurry, or if you want it literally just a, uh, a sharp shadow. And the spread makes it bigger, so if you got to see, the spread makes it kind of thickens it up. So you got to play with the size and the spread together. Okay, so there you go. Really nice... Uh, Easy stuff we can do with blending options right there. Okay, so now what if you got a dark background like this? Now, here's where the shadowing, here's where the glowing comes into play. So we're gonna remove the drop shadow, okay? And then we're gonna click on the glow, outer glow. So we do have a stroke, so it's not appearing yet because it's kind of behind the stroke. Now, if we wanted to turn this more to a blue, and we're gonna move it to add, and then just size it up. So. In order for the glow to really appear, you need a dark background because you need it to react with the background. Okay, so really cool effect there. So we quickly went through all the blending options. Um, last thing I want to show you is what if you're doing this for logos? It worked great for text, but let's say you got a logo you want to throw in there. Now, first of all, you do want to make sure that your logo file has a transparency. You see the, the dots behind there? That means this logo is transparent. Okay, reason is a lot of people try to throw in a JPEG of their logo like this, which I didn't get a high quality one, a JPEG, and then they start trying to add some blending options on there. Well, that's not going to work because, watch, if I put in color overlay, these blending options are not, are applying to the entire image. They're not distinguishing the, ba the white background from the actual graphic of your logo. So if you want to add blending options to a logo, you do need to start from a transparent logo so click blending options here. I could do a quick bevel this way. Very subtle with the bevel. Drop the black. Just ever so subtle around the edges. See that black edge? And then same thing. A really, really drop the opacity. Really subtle drop shadow. And there's, that just gives our, our logo a lot of depth. I'm going to zoom in here and show you really. It looks, you know, ten times better because with the blending options. So go to my history and I'll remove watch. This is how we pasted it in and this is how it is. It's very subtle but it adds a whole new depth 
kind of almost a 3D feel to our logo. So that's really the power of blending options. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed. Um, please comment below, please like the video, and uh, give me suggestions for more tutorials. Check out the website 10 Minute Photoshop, check me out on Twitter, IMX Productions, and thank you for watching. Have a great day.